Welcome to a Mercy Medical Center webinar. I am Lynn Harmon, Program Coordinator, and today's topic is the ABCs of Child Safety Seats. Joining us is Michelle Altmeyer, Program Coordinator at Mercy Birthplace, and Shannon Stokesberry, Police Officer with the Cedar Rapids Police Department and Co-Coordinator of Lynn County Safe Kids Coalition. Well, I'm very happy to welcome you both to our webinar today. I'm going to turn the mic over to Shannon now, and we'll go ahead and get started. All right, well, let's get started here. But before we do that, I just want to tell, talk a little bit about the Safe Kids Coalition. In Lynn County, we are one of over 600 coalitions nationwide. And we are made up of a group of safety professionals from all over Lynn County. And safety professionals, I mean, we're talking about police officers, firefighters, nurses, hospital employees, Department of Public Health. So we have a wide range of people on our coalition. And we all work towards preventing unintentional injuries to kids. So Michelle and I are both certified child passenger safety technicians. So we've both been through a four or five day training course on car seats. And we're going to talk to you a little bit today about the ABCs of car seats. So we're going to move on to the first slide. As a parent or a caregiver, one of the most important responsibilities all of you have is to keep your children safe when riding in a vehicle. So vehicle crashes are the number one cause of childhood fatalities in the nation. And a nationwide stat is that over 73% of children are incorrectly restrained or not restrained at all. So that's a, a very high number that we need to get down. And just right here in Lynn County, last year, about 67% of the car seats we checked that were installed were not installed correctly. So we are just under the national average, but still, that's a very high number and a lot of kids that could get hurt because their car seats are not installed properly. So here are the objectives for today. We want to create awareness of, of the importance of child passenger safety education and then educate you as parents, grandparents, caregivers about the types of child safety seats available and the appropriate ages and weights for each. And then we are going to help answer frequently asked questions. First, we're going to go over the Iowa State law. So the law says that children must ride in an appropriate rear-facing safety seat until they're at least one year old and at least 20 pounds. So recommendations want them to be rear-facing until they're about two years of age. But um, back to the law, like I said, the child has to be at least one year old and at least 20 pounds. So if the child weighs 25 pounds and is only 10 months old, they still cannot get turned around to go forward facing. They have to be at least one year old and at least 20 pounds. Once they move out of that rear facing seat, they have to ride in some type of child safety seat or booster seat through the age of five. And then once they turn six, they can sit in a regular seat belt if it fits properly. And we're going to go over the seat belt fit test in just a few minutes here. But if the child does not fit properly in a regular seat belt, then they still should continue riding in a booster seat according to the manufacturer's instructions. And then rear seat occupants up to age 18 must be secured by a safety belt. So obviously people in the front seat all need to be buckled up and then anyone under 18 years old, no matter where they're sitting in the vehicle, also need to be buckled up. So there are two very important tools that sometimes parents, grandparents, caregivers don't really think about and the first one is your vehicle owner's manual. And then the second one is your child safety seat instruction booklet. So those are very important resources for you and they can also answer a lot of your questions if you take a look through them, read them, and, um, and follow their instructions because there are lots of different car seats out there, lots of different vehicles, and the way you install one car seat in one vehicle might not be the same as the way you install it in another vehicle. And so that's why you need to check those owner's manuals and always keep them handy. Okay, there are two types of, um, of ways that you can install your child restraint car seat. Um, you can either use the latch system, which stands for lower anchor tether for child restraints, um, which the latch system um, is usually in vehicles that are 2003 and newer. Um, you'll see um, that usually there's a little indicator in your seats if, you're, if your vehicle has those lower anchors. Um, and it will definitely tell you in your owner's manual, which is an excellent tool to refer to. Um, not all um, of the back seats um, uh, do have the, the 
the uh, the lower anchors in all positioning of, of the seats. Um, of course, your baby is safest in the center rear um, uh, location, and not not all vehicles do have the latch, so you'll have to look to see that. So you can either use the latch system, or of course, you can use your seatbelt system. Um, the biggest thing um, that that we see. Uh, misuse on is that people are not locking in those seat belts. So it's so important if you do use the seat belt system to restrain that um, that child, um, the car seat, is to pull the seat belt all the way out so it is locked. Okay, um, there are um, a couple different child um, safety restraints. Of course, you've got your rear facing seats, um, rear facing. Um, infant usually carrier, um, and then the convertible seat, which is rear facing, um, and then of course the forward facing seats with the harness and the booster seats, and of course the seat belts as they get older. So we're going to just explain the different types of child safety restraints here next. All right, the first one is the rear facing seats. Um, the rear facing, you have two different types here. The rear facing infant only, um, which is actually only rear facing only, as it indicates here. Um, and those usually go from four pounds um, all the way up to 22 pounds. Um, and of course can go up to 30, 35 pounds. Um, you're gonna see on your on your owner's manual of the car seat as well as on the car seat, it will tell you the weight. Um, and the height positioning. Um, then we also have the rear-facing convertible seats, um, which of course can be rear-facing or forward-facing. Um, and of course, some of them do go up, as you see in the slide, up to 45 pounds. But once again, you'll have to look at your um, the owner's manual of the car seat to see um, when you can turn, turn babe around. They do recommend um, that babe be at least two years old until you do have them forward facing is the recommendation from the American Academy of Pediatrics. Okay, then um, as far as forward facing, you'll see here that children can be forward facing when they've outgrown their limit of their rear facing seat and um, at least one year old and 20 pounds, so it has to be both there. Um, like I just said earlier, we do recommend, um, the American Academy of Pediatrics does recommend that that um, you be at least two years old before you are forward facing, but it does, the law is one year old and 20 pounds. Um, and then children under 40 pounds are best protected, of course, with an internal harness. Um, as far as the forward facing seats go, um, there's a forward facing convertible seat. Um, which goes to 40 pounds, and then of course the combination seat and booster seat with harness, um, and that actually has an internal harness which actually can be removed, which then just becomes a booster seat as the child gets older. All right, next we're gonna talk about harness slots, and if you look at your car seat, you'll see that there are different levels of the harness slots in it. So when you put the baby in there, the important thing to remember when the seat is rear facing, the harness strap should come out at or below baby's shoulders. And then once the seat goes forward facing or in any forward facing seat, the harness strap should come out at or above baby's shoulders. So make sure you check those harness slots and as baby grows, you might need, need to adjust those. The retainer clip is another important part of the seat and that's the little clip we call the chest clip also and that needs to go at armpit level on baby so the best way to do it is put baby in the seat get the straps all buckled up and then move that retainer clip or chest clip up to armpit level on baby and that holds the straps in position now remember those harness straps need to be snug on baby and you shouldn't be able to pinch any of the webbing on the harness so Michelle's going to talk a little bit about the pinch test in just a few minutes here and then on to booster seats, those are typically for kids that are around four years old and around 40 pounds. And children need to be mature enough to stay in place in the booster seat. So it's up to parents to decide when you wanna move that child into the booster seat. But if, if they're in a, in a regular seat, maybe with the internal harness straps and they're still within the height and weight requirements for that seat, I would keep them in that seat as long as you can before you move them onto the booster. And then children should ride in booster seats until they fit the seat belt system. And once again, we'll talk about the seat belt fit test later on in the webinar. And studies have shown that most kids really aren't big enough to sit in a regular seat belt until they're closer to eight to 12 years old. All right, here we are at the seat belt fit test. <laughs> 
so there are three things you need to look at when you're checking your child to see if they're big enough to sit in the seat belt. So what you need to do is have the child sit in the back seat of the vehicle, push their bottom and their back all the way to the back of the seat, and then check the um, lap belt portion. If that lap belt goes across their stomach, they're not big enough, it should go across their upper thigh or hip area. Check the shoulder belt, it should go across the middle of the shoulder and across the chest. It should not be digging into their neck. They should never put that shoulder belt part behind their head or under their arm because then it's not gonna do what it's made to do and they could get injured severely in a crash. And then the third thing is to check their legs and their knees. So their knees should bend naturally at the edge of the seat and if they're still sticking up yet, then they're probably not tall enough. So if they can fit those three criteria, then they should be big enough to sit in a regular seat belt. Otherwise, they should stay in a booster seat. And like I just said, most kids really aren't big enough for a seat belt until they're about eight to 12 years old. Another thing to think about are airbags. And airbags are in a car to keep adults safe in a crash situation. So that's why we say to never put any child safety seats or kids in front of an airbag. And really, kids should sit in the back seat until they're about 13 years old. Even if they're not sitting in a booster seat anymore or any kind of child restraint, they should still be sitting in the back seat buckled up until they're at least 13. And the reason for that is if they're sitting in the front seat and the car crashes and that airbag pops out, like I said, that airbag is made to protect adults. But if kids are sitting in front of the airbag, when that airbag pops out, that could actually injure kids and hurt them. So that's why we don't want them in front of any airbags. If you have a vehicle that has only a front seat and you have to put a child or a child restraint in that front seat, we recommend turning off the airbags if it has that option or pushing that seat back as far as it can go. But once again, the back seat is the safest place for kids. Okay, now we're just going to talk a little bit about the inch in the pinch test. So once your car seat is installed, um, you're going to want to give it a good shake um, at the base where the seat belt um, fits. Um, if you can move it more than an inch, um, either front or back or side to side, then it is too loose and you're going to have to tighten that latch system that um, those lower anchors, that strap there, or the seatbelt part. Um, so we do not want it to move more than an inch. If it moves less than an inch, um, you're good to go. Um, and then the harness, um, you want to make sure when babe is in the um, babe or child, I guess is 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 um, latched into the car seat. Um, like Shannon said, again, when you're rear facing, those harness slots need to be at or below, and when you're forward facing, at or above, and then just take your fingers and lightly just pinch the strap at the child's shoulder, and if you're um, unable to pinch any excess webbing, then of course you're good to go. If you can pinch, um, pinch the webbing um, together, then it's a little bit too loose, so we do recommend that you tighten that up a little bit. Okay, um, I did mention earlier that all of the car seats do have um, stickers on the sides of your car seats. Um, really one important thing that we want to stress is the expiration date. Yes, it is true that car seats do expire. Now, um, on your car seat, you will see different labels. Um, you will see that it has, it'll have a manufacturer date and then um, the majority of them do have an expiration date, but not all car seats do have an expiration date. Um, we do recommend that the car seat has expired six months, or sorry, excuse me, six years after the date of manufacturing. So um, car seats do expire six years after the date of manufacturing, and you'll see that you'll have a label on your car seat. Um, if it is time to, um, the car seat has expired and you want to dispose of it, um, we do recommend that you cut the straps out of the car seat and then dispose of that properly. Um, you'll also see when you purchase your um, brand new car seat that you will have a registration card. And this is extremely important to complete this safety seat registration card. Um, that way your, um, the, the car seat manufacturer knows that you've purchased that. And then if there's any type of recall or anything, you would certainly be notified um, of that. If you have lost that um, important little card, you can go online and fill out that through your car seat manufacturer. All right, and real quick, I just want to go back to talking about expiration dates on car seats. We get a lot of questions about that. And 
like Michelle said, they do usually expire about six years from the date of manufacture, not six years from the first day you started using it. Um, and then also some car seats actually have an expiration date on them, which might be six, seven, eight years um, from the date of manufacture. So really the important thing is to check your labels on your car seat and, and look at your owner's manual for the car seat as well. Now let's talk a little bit about car seat history and using secondhand seats. First of all, you always need to know your car seat's history if you do not buy it new. So we really don't like people buying car seats at garage sales or at secondhand stores or off the internet because you don't know if it's been involved in a crash, you don't know if it has recalls, you don't know if it's missing pieces. So there are too many unknowns out there and you really don't want to put your child's safety in jeopardy by saving a few bucks and build, buying a used car seat. Um, the only time you should use a secondhand car seat would be if you know the person that you're getting the car seat from. Maybe it's a brother, sister, cousin, someone that you can trust that you that can tell you the history of it so you know for sure that it is in good condition and safe to be using. Um, so once again, do not buy car seats at garage sales off the internet at secondhand stores. Now let's talk about crash situations. NHTSA recommends that child safety seats be replaced following a moderate or severe crash. So you need to look at all these different lines here and really a minor crash is considered all if it meets all of these criteria. So um, the vehicle has to be able to be driven away from the crash site. The vehicle door nearest the safety seat was undamaged. There were no injuries to any of the vehicle occupants. The airbags, if present, did not deploy and there's no visible damage to the car seat. So once again, those are all from NHTSA, and NHTSA is the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, and they have a very helpful website. If you ever go to their website, um, you can get recall lists off of there, you can get safety tips, lots of great information. Now, if you check your owner's manual for the car seat or go online to your manufacturer's website, there are some manufacturers that say you should replace your car seat after any kind of crash at all. So you really need to check with the manufacturer and, and do what they say to do. And insurance companies are pretty good about replacing car seats in crash situations, so don't worry that um, you're going to have to go out and spend a whole bunch of money again on a car seat. But if you do have to do that, it's, it's worth it because it's for the child and, and you want to keep your little one safe all the time. All right, um, let's just talk a little bit about pointers for, um, of course, keeping your kids in their safety seats. Um, uh, definitely start early. So, um, well, obviously, I guess your kids are going to have to be in their car seats, of course, the whole time. That is the state law. Um, but we definitely want you to model that behavior. So every single time, uh, everybody should be buckled up. We do recommend in the vehicle and, of course, even grandparents, too. Um, even if it is just for a quick errand down the street, um, we do recommend that everybody be buckled up because kids are going to model that behavior from parents. Um, and we do not want kids, of course, unbuckling themselves. Um, so you just need to be firm about it and let them know that the car seats are there to keep them safe. Um, um, of course, just another thing to think about is keeping your kids safe in your vehicle is that if, if by chance there was a crash, um, the items in your vehicle could become projectiles and could injure somebody. So we do recommend that you do not have loose items um, in, in, in your vehicle. Um, if you do have to have something, of course, we recommend soft toys, soft books in the car because once again, if there was a crash, um, those items could become flying and become a projectile. Um, the other thing to think about too is if it is not attached to the car seat or the vehicle, it really should not be around your baby. Um, once again, if there was a crash, those items could become projectiles. So think about the other items that you have in the vehicle. Oh, so um, we are here to help you. Um, here in Lynn County, we're very fortunate that we have many resources for our certified um, uh, child safety seat um, inspectors to take a look at your at your vehicle and your car seats. Um, like we said earlier in the slide, Shannon mentioned that in Lynn County, we see 60% of car seats are not installed correctly. There is a misuse um, with those, so 67% is pretty high. We'd like to get that number a little bit lower. 
Um, certainly, you can locate a, cert a certified um, technician in your area. And of course, here in Lynn County, we do offer free inspections. Um, so this number is very handy, 319-310-SEAT, which is the Lynn County Safe Kids Coalition number. And you can schedule your free inspection. Um, our friends at McGrath GMC in Hiawatha um, also allow us to host a free inspection the second Thursday every month, but appointments are needed. So once again, that number is 319-310-SEAT. And we are here to help you. There, um, like, like Shannon mentioned, it's an extensive course that these certified car seat technicians have taken, and we are here to help you. Okay. And just going back a little bit more to add what Michelle was talking about, um, child safety in the car. We always want parents to model the good behavior, like Michelle said, but also make sure that you explain to your child why they have to sit in the car seat, why they have to buckle up, and never let them ride without a car seat, even if you're going to the end of the road or just down the block, because if you show them that that's an option, they're going to try it and want to do it over and over again. So if they know that there's no other option but to sit in their car seat, then, then they'll learn that that's the way they have to ride if they're going to go in the car. So just keep that in mind. And then also talking about everyone buckling up, um, because whoever's not buckled up, whether it's an adult or a kid, um, like Michelle was talking about in crashes, whatever's not attached could become a projectile. And I know that I watched a video a while back and they showed it was a group of kids, like high school kids going to a, a dance or prom or something like that. They were all in the car, front seat, back seat, there were probably five of them in there. And everyone had buckled up except for one person who was sitting in the middle back seat position. And they all thought they were being safe, except for the one that wasn't buckled up, obviously. They got in a crash, and the one that was not buckled up actually flew around the car and killed everybody else in the car. So you need to look out for yourself and buckle up, but you also need to look out for everyone else in your vehicle and make sure that they are also buckled up as well. Okay, so now we're going to go over some frequently asked questions. Um, and these questions you can find on different car seat manufacturers' websites, on Safe Kids, on NHTSA's website. So um, definitely check those out, especially if you have a specific question dealing with your car seat. So one question, should my child use a safety seat on an airplane? Um, yes, that's a good idea. You're not required to, but um, check with the airline and see if they'll let you install the car seat. Um, obviously, on airplanes, you only have a lap belt, so check with that airline that you're flying on. Um, which child safety seat is best for my child? That's a good question. We get asked a lot. And even if it's the most expensive car seat, that doesn't mean that it is best for your child. So the one that's best is the one that fits your child, that fits your car, and that fits your family's needs. So one that you can install and feel comfortable installing. So don't get wrapped up on the, the price thing because if it's being sold in a store, it's been crash tested and it's safe. So like I said, really, you know, one kind of seat might be safe for one person's child, but that same seat might not work the best for your child. Um, and we talked a little bit about safety seats and expiration dates and all that. Just make sure you check your labels and check your owner's manual. If you have any questions about expirations or replacing the seat, contact the manufacturer. Oh, and when can my child ride in the front seat? We also discussed that a little bit. So. If they're under age 13, they really should be in the back seat, and that's for their safety, um, away from the airbags. And um, and once again, explain that to your child. And a lot of kids think they're big kids once they get out of that booster seat, but that doesn't mean that they can automatically move up into the front seat. Let's see. What if there's no back seat? We did talk about that, pushing the, the front seat back as far as it can go and turning off the airbags. And what should you do if you see a child playing around a vehicle? At our safety seat checks, we do like to talk to parents and explain the importance of teaching their children that vehicles are not playgrounds, so they should never play inside vehicles, around vehicles, underneath vehicles, because we do have backovers that happen, and that's where a child might be playing behind a vehicle. And even if you look in your rear view mirror, that you still won't be able to see the child. So we always want children to stay away from vehicles unless they're getting in or getting out or riding in the vehicle. Never leave your child alone in the car. That's a, a huge problem that has um, that we've really been trying to hit on over the last few years here because we do have lots of kids that kids and babies that have died in hot cars. So even if you're running into the store just for a second or if you're just going to jump out to um, do something, you always need to take, take your child or the baby with you. Never leave them in the car. And, of course, it's more fun to show them off anyway if you do take them with you. 
We're going to talk a little bit about heat stroke. This is the leading cause of non-crash vehicle-related deaths for children under age 14. So within 10 minutes, the inside temperature of a vehicle can heat up to 20 degrees hotter than the outside temperature. And after 30 minutes, the vehicle's temperature can be up to 34 degrees hotter. So vehicles do warm up fast, heat up fast, and a child's body, child's body does not have the same internal temperature control as an adult's. And we say that child's um, temperature can rise three to five times faster than adults. So just keep that in mind. Body temperature can rise to 106 degrees Fahrenheit within 10 to 15 minutes, and that's way, way, way too hot. Even if you have a child in a car and you crack the windows, that's not good enough. Take the child out of the car, never leave them in there. And at the time we did this PowerPoint, um, at that time, 21 children um, had died of heat stroke so far this year in the U.S., and just between that time, which is pretty much within the last week, two more have died. So we're up to 23 kids so far this year that have died of heat stroke. And that could be because of kids getting in the car and playing and locking the doors and not knowing how to get back out. It could be from a parent accidentally or maybe purposefully leaving their child in the car and the child getting too hot and dying. So, so just keep that in mind. Like I said, never leave them, not even for a minute. Take them with you all the time. We want you to remember this acronym ACT, A-C-T. The A stands for avoid heat stroke related injury and death by never leaving your child alone in a car, not even for a minute. And make sure to keep your car locked when you're not in it so that kids don't get in on their own. The C stands for create. Create reminders by putting something in the back of your car next to your child, such as something soft, like maybe a purse or a cell phone, something that you'll need at your final destination. And the reason for that is when you get to that final destination, especially if it's not part of your normal routine, um, that will remind you to open up the back door and grab whatever you put back there, but it will also remind you that your child is back there, so hopefully you won't leave them. And then the T is for take action. If you see a child alone in a car, please call 911 right away. That is an emergency, and like I just said, body, body temperatures of kids can heat up very quickly, so um, please, please, please call 911 so that we can get out there and hopefully get the child or get the baby before it's too late. And then here are some helpful websites for you, www.safekids.org, www.carseat.org, and then NHTSA's website, www.nitsa.gov. Or you can also like us on Facebook, Lynn County Safe Kids. There are many other helpful websites out there, but um, these are good websites to go to with questions or just to get some, some good safety tips. So I will turn it back over to Lynn. Well, thank you both for sharing this important information. Uh, if you have any questions that were not answered um, during this presentation, you can send your questions to Mercy's Experts. Experts will be sure that Shannon and uh, Michelle get the questions. And um, this can be reached on our website. Uh, just go to mercycare.org forward slash contact dash us and, and click on that link, submit your questions, and we will um, get the questions to um, each of these ladies. Now, if you, um, you can always check our website for information about future webinars or listen to past webinars, and that web, web address is mercycare.org forward slash webinars. Well, once again, thank you both for joining us today, and thank you all our listeners for being with us.